Robert Griffin III, ESPN College Football NFL analyst and a winner of the Heisman in 2011 when he played at Baylor. Where is the Heisman Trophy right now? Well, the Heisman Trophy is in my closet right now. For 10 years, it was with my mom and dad, and uh, we just recently got it back with a bunch of moves going on. Had to make sure it was secure. So, you know, I gave it to the parents because they helped me uh, accomplish all my goals and dreams, so I felt like it should be with them. Okay, so where are you going to display it in your home? Uh, in my home, it'll still be in the closet. Uh, I'm not the guy that that holds up a shrine to himself or puts a bunch of trophies up and all that. If you... If you really know me and you can uh, get to the closet, then you'll get a chance to see the husband. Wow. I mean, is it a walk-in closet? Is it you know, a big closet? Clothes yeah, in there? It's a big closet. It's not like, you know, shuttered or anything. It's uh, okay. we double double wooded the top of the of the shelves to just be able to put any awards that me and my wife as well. She's a, you know, Estonian heptathlete, went to Florida State. Uh, you know, a heptathlon record holder there at Florida State. So we put all our trophies over on the top, and that's the only way you'll get to see them. Okay. Did your wife ask why Florida State was not in the Final Four? Yeah, she she did, but she um she was pretty outraged about it as well. And then and, and so was I. I thought the committee certainly got it wrong and sent the wrong message to all the fans, coaches, and uh, everyone out there that follows the sport. Well, okay. Is Florida State better than Georgia? Um, according to the committee, they are. Do you think Florida State is better than Georgia? The real question is, did Florida State earn a right to play in the college football playoff? And yes, they did. That's the question. Well, I think that's open to interpretation. Because we assume you go undefeated, that means you get to play. It's, it's open to interpretation. It's the no. human element. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not? Yes, because no. Florida State's not in the I Final mean. Four. So... It, it's not open to it's open it it was that's why they're not the committee and I, I watched the show yesterday and heard you talk to booger so um i know how you feel about this and you feel like it's all about the money it is yeah but the question for me is the college what is the college football playoffs committee's selection committee what is their job their job is to put the four best teams in yeah correct it should be but that's their job right should be Okay, so if the job is to put the four best teams in, how are they breaking down the criteria for what the four best teams are? It's the eye test for them, I guess. They're, we're not doing computers. No, they're, they're doing everything. They have the system set up so well that you can't point to one thing to say, gotcha, they, this is why they got it wrong. They're taking in conference championships. They're taking in the eye test, common opponents, a whole bunch of elements to determine who the four best teams are. Mm -hmm. So if you have these conference champions, and they're all similar because they're conference champions, if one is undefeated from a Power 5 conference, they've earned the right to play in the college football playoff. Period. End of story. We don't otherwise, otherwise, now you're taking into account you're favoring one conference over another conference. And if they're both undefeated, listen, that's, that is open to interpretation. But when you have an undefeated Power 5 conference champion, they have earned the right to be in the college football playoff. Because otherwise, me and you could sit here and make the argument that Georgia should be in the college football playoff because they were number one in the committee's rankings for three straight weeks. And you're telling me that a one-loss Georgia wouldn't be or be favored against almost every team that's in the college football playoff? Yes. They're not in the, the four best teams in. They're not. Don't and in that case... What they did to Florida State is completely wrong. All right. Well, we got Georgia against Florida State, right? Yeah, and how many guys do you think are going to opt out of that? <laughs> well, okay. it, oh, come on. it might be the opt-out. That's all these bowl games. I'm looking at all <laughs> these games, these matchups, Robert. Right. Every team has their quarterback in the portal. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. There's 1,100 kids in the portal. Yeah, it's bad. It's it's uh I put it this way I've got two bowl games uh, and in both bowl games I think both quarterbacks from both teams will not be playing in the game. It's it's uh it's utterly ridiculous from that standpoint. And I just had Marcus Freeman on my show RG three and the ones uh, talking about you know what's your what's your pitch to the players to actually play in this game, and it 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 all revolves around you know 
standing by your brothers. There's teams that are going to ask, hey, why didn't you play in this game? And I think it's it varies from like a first round guy. If you're going to be a top 10 pick and you're not playing for a national title, I, I understand. Um, but there's going to be so many opt outs of guys that are going to be getting drafted fifth, sixth, seventh round because they just don't they don't see the reward in playing the game uh, based off the risk that that there's going to be there. Uh, and when you talk about this Florida State, Georgia game, it's it just goes back to if Florida State without their quarterback isn't better than Alabama or Texas. How in the hell are they better than Georgia? But the committee put them in front of Georgia. Yeah. And now we're going to have that game. And some people are going to use that game yes. as a barometer <laughs> to say, see, this is what happened. But I, I'm just I'm going about this in a way that I don't think that every player from Georgia or every player from Florida State that led to them getting to where they are right now is going to play in the game. Yeah. It just seemed like it's going to happen. Robert Griffin III joining us uh, on behalf of the uh, More Than a Trophy campaign designed to create greater awareness of the charitable impact and uh, the programs from the Heisman Trust beyond the annual trophy ceremony. And uh, his new podcast is RG3 and the Ones. Anything you want to add to uh, More Than a Trophy campaign? Yeah, Dan, I mean, really, the, the Heisman Trophy Trust, their their whole focus right now is just letting people know that they do more than just hand out the Heisman Trophy. I mean, we've got the Humanitarian Award this year that's going to Solomon Thomas from the uh, New York Jets, the defensive end. Uh, the trust has donated over $25 million, you know, especially to programs like the, the high school Heisman program that they have. And for me personally, being able to work with them, you know, since I won the award in 2011, uh, has truly been a joy and and they do so much in the community they, they've helped me do so much in the community giving back and 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 helping uh, with food insecurity um that i felt like it was it was very warranted to come on here and, and not just sing their praises but also be excited about the guys that we have potentially coming to join that heisman fraternity uh, i think they're all worthy of the award talking about uh, michael Penix jr Jaden daniels bo nix and of course marvin harrison jr out there playing like his daddy um, it, it's really cool to, to see these guys have an opportunity to, to join this fraternity. And I look forward to the ceremony uh, coming up on Saturday. Who do you think will win? Whew. That's a good, that's a great question, Dan. You know, you've been in this business a very long time, so, you know, I can't disclose my vote. Um, but who, uh, who do you think will win? That doesn't mean who you voted for. Who do you think yeah, will win? That's what I'm saying. You've, you've been in the industry a long time, so you know how to answer the questions. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, collectively around the country, you'll see that Jaden Daniels probably um, did the most to, to win the award. Uh, passing yards, touchdowns, all very similar to Bo Nix. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. led the country in passing yards, uh, but it was what Jaden Daniels did on the ground. Rushing for 1,000 yards, only player in college football to have 3,500 yards passing and 1,000 yards rushing. Uh, there was just so much there. And Bo Nix, I feel like, had an opportunity to win it in yeah. the Pac-12 championship game. Yeah. Uh, but because he got beat twice by Michael Penix Jr., uh, there might be some people that put a damper on that. But I could see it being a you know a blowout race for Jaden Daniels. I could also see it being very close because uh, this year there's a lot of worthy uh, finalists. Who turned in the greatest season in your recent memory uh, that a uh, quarterback has? What's the uh, one that stands out more than any? Yeah, I mean, I think I know where you're going with this. For for me, it was probably Joe Burrow, uh, the LSU year. The, I just talked to him on the sideline uh, of the Bengals, Jags, Monday Night Football game, um, you know, with his injury. And we were talking about that year. <laughs> they were just so dominant. Um, and it's just funny because Jaden Daniels had a better year uh, statistically than Joe Burrow did that season. And we saw how Joe Burrow ran away with the Heisman Trophy. So um, it's uh, it's one of those deals of, the, it's pretty really impressive year, uh, what Jaden Daniels did. But you look back, um, Manziel had an unbelievable year. Uh, you did. Cam. Um, I don't know who else you spring. You know, Burrow, obviously, in there. Anybody else that you throw? Caleb Williams, the year, the previous one, was a great yep. year. By the way, yep. any problem with him not playing in the bowl game? Uh, I don't have a problem with Caleb not playing in the bowl game. Um is that is that out there that he's not playing? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I got no problem. Like I said, I, I called Kenny Pickett's game um, when he had the fake slide with Mark Jones and Quinn Kessenick, and then we had their bowl game, and Kenny didn't play in their bowl game, and we all understood why. Like, there's an opportunity there to go, um, you know, make generational wealth, and I've got no problem with Caleb not playing this year in a bowl game because last year he played in the bowl game when he wasn't even seventy five percent healthy. 
Yeah. So I think he's proven that he's willing to put it all on the line for his guys. And in this moment, if he is going to go pro uh, and decides not to play that ball game, then I don't think anybody should hold that against him. We had Dan Orlovsky on first hour, and we were talking about structure in college or lack of structure, that yep. Caleb was wonderful out of structure. <laughs> but in the NFL, you have to have structure. Yeah, You have to be able to at some point. And, mm -hmm. you know, he wondered about that, that he was sort of out of structure because they had to score 40 points. You know, maybe Lincoln Riley didn't say, hey, I need you to do this. Like, he had to improvise a lot. That transition from what you can get away with college to what you can get away with in the pros, how big of a transition is that for quarterbacks who are similar athletically to Caleb? Yeah, I mean, I think the the – answer the question specifically is that the windows in the NFL are tighter and, and it's not just because the hash marks are closer together. Uh, it's because the guys are bigger, they're faster. There's a better understanding of how uh, NFL defenses are trying to attack an NFL offense. Now, do I think that that could be thrown off? 100% it could be thrown off. Look at what, what Chip Kelly did with the Eagles in his first year. Um, it's just the concepts in the NFL have become so repeatable that if you've been in the league for seven years, you've seen every single route tree and combination that there is known to man in those NFL offenses. So they're a, they're a little bit faster to like understand things are happening. And there's no there's not as many fishes, what we call them on the field, where you go to the, into the game. and You're like, all right, this safety or this corner is the worst player on the field. we got to attack him. You know, you're basically attacking all Americans from college at every stop that you go in the NFL. So I think that is a little bit of adjustment for guys. The game is a little bit faster, but I think it's a, it's just simply a talking point when guys bring up the fact that Caleb Williams didn't play within structure. I don't think that's real. I think what happens with Caleb Williams is he goes through the structure and that because he's so dynamic after the play breaks down, that is what we focus on. So we see all the highlight reel runs and the highlight reel scrambles, but this guy does play within structure. And he went to a quarterback camp called the QB Collective, which has guys like the Kyle Shanahan's and the Mike McDaniels and the Sean McVay's. And he worked with them at a very young age. And I can tell you right now, the NFL scouts and NFL coaches cannot wait to get their hands on Caleb Williams. They know he can play within structure. They just love the fact that he can be creative outside of it, a la Patrick Mahomes. You had world-class speed, but let's look at Tyreek Hill's speed. <laughs> How would you describe? There's fast, and then yeah. fast guys looking at somebody saying, that guy's fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyreek is, um, he's, uh, he's instant grits. You know what I mean? Like when he, as soon as he puts his foot down, he's at full speed. And I think that's the difference. Uh, I appreciate you saying that I have world class speed, um, have world class speed. Uh, but there's a difference between like do you Usain still have world class speed? Yes, I do. There's uh there's a difference between Usain Bolt on a track, uh, having world class speed and then being able to have that translate on a football field. If Usain Bolt and Tyreek raced, I certainly believe that Usain Bolt is winning that race. But when you talk about being able to run and cut and change direction and catch the ball and get vertical and break down and come out of your break, that's where just Tyreek, uh, he sets himself apart from everybody else in the league. I just had him on the show on RG3 and the Ones, and he was talking about how he's trying to put on for short kings. And, and he's doing that. Uh, Tyreek Hills do not grow on trees. And because his ability, as soon as he puts his foot down, he's at full speed. That's why you see DB so afraid to cover him. And they, they really can't cover him. He has to make a mistake for them to be able to cover him. And I think we've seen that this year as he's on pace to, you know, break that 2000 yard barrier. And I think he should be the MVP right now. Okay. If I did a 60 yard dash, yep. Tyreek Hill and Usain Bolt. Yep. Who wins? Yeah. I mean, 60 yard dash, uh, Usain Bolt won in that race. Not right now. Uh, I don't know. No, oh, don't, don't play. Don't, 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 don't do that. Tyreek in a 60? In a 60, in a 40? A in a 40? Uh, okay, can he beat him in, in a, a 40? In, in a 40, he 40, could. Tyreek has a chance. Okay. But, he has a chance. But it, even on a track, if you put Tyreek in a 40 in comparison to Usain Bolt on a track, yeah. Usain Bolt wins that race. There's a difference between track speed and football speed. I'm telling you. Go okay, look at what if we put him on the football field? What if we did? Yeah, there's a video out there of Usain Bolt running a 40 at like some event, maybe yeah. it was around the Super Bowl or something, and he went <laughs> flats and he ran like a four four one. So like, <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. Okay. All my 
people that are listening right now okay. understand that I know the difference between track speed and football speed. Tyreek Hill is the fastest human being that plays football. Okay. Period. End of story. He's not faster than Usain Bolt. Did you reach out to the Jets to try to play quarterback for them? You mean like Colin Kaepernick? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> you I did not. not. I, I didn't do but, that. But there are stories that you have offered your services. Um, Cleveland? Telling- oh, no, no, no. I haven't. I haven't. Um, I personally have not reached out to a team to say, yeah. Has a representative, not, has a but, representative uh, reached out? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I mean representatives reach out all the time. You well, know. but they have to have your approval. <laughs> no, no, they don't. No, no, they don't. If if you have an agent, if you have an agent and someone's reaching out to teams on on your behalf, they don't ask you if they can reach out to that team. They just reach out to the team. So well, what I'll, uh, what I'll say is what I have done is yeah. I have publicly stated that uh, I can play. I'm willing and able to play. I want to play. And if a team just so happens to call my number, <laughs> I'm ready to play. I have said that. I said the Browns should have signed me. I thought they should have. Okay. They did. They went with Joe Flacco. Guess what? Joe Flacco looked really good this past week. For a guy that's just coming off, off the couch, he looked really good going out there playing. And I'm sure the Jets wish they had Joe Flacco right now. Yeah. Or Zach Wilson, because they need him back badly. Okay. What do you make of the Zach Wilson situation <laughs> here? How does this I happen, don't... Robert? <laughs> it's so funny, man. I, I will say this. Aaron Rodgers is 100% right when he talks about the sources in the building going out there and trying to undercut Zach Wilson now. That is completely wrong. Uh, I'm sure Rodgers has experienced it at some point in his career. I certainly did. That's not what winning organizations do. So I agree with him on that. For the Zach Wilson thing, to me, it was hilarious watching the clip of him and Aaron on the sideline because uh, it definitely looked like Aaron said something along the lines of, yeah, and they thought you were the problem. When you get someone else out there and you now cut the guy that you benched Zach Wilson for and are now starting another guy, yeah. I mean, it, it it was clear to me, and I've said it, it wasn't all on Zach Wilson. They only started the other guys because they felt like they had to do something. Now they're saying that Zach Wilson is the best quarterback they have on the team that's healthy, and they <laughs> need to start him, and, he's, and he should play. And I don't think that he's shying away from wanting to play. It's just a matter of the team having his best interest at heart. And that's, I think, the the real point. And Booger brought this up. They quit on him. Yeah. Like they kicked him to the curb. Put him in. Let him play. Let him play the rest of the year. Tim Boyle is not an NFL quarterback. He's just not. Might be great in the quarterback room. Trevor Simeon is not a starting quarterback. If, if we're going to find out about Zach Wilson, let's find out. Now you're going to find out more about him than you will at any other point in his life, in his career. When he's yep. down, now let's see what you got. Correct. Throw him in there, let him go. Good or bad, he's not going to be with the team next year. Feels like some coaches are covering up for themselves, trying to protect themselves, that it's Zach Wilson's the issue, not them. Man, that's a strong statement, and, and I don't disagree with it at all. I think two reasons they need to start Zach Wilson. One, he's the best quarterback they have. That is clear and evident, and he's the most talented quarterback that they have. And at this point, like you said, his response – what do you do when when you're completely backed into a corner, but you literally have nothing to lose? Yeah. You will not be here next year. Yeah. Go out there, let that dog hunt. And I mean, would you say the Jets season is over right now? Yeah. Then they have nothing to lose putting Zach Wilson back out there. Let him go play and 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 put him in the best position to be successful. Throw, let, him throw, let him throw the ball 45 times. I don't know. They can't run it. So mm-hmm. you might as well let him go out there and be a gunslinger and see what he can show the rest of the league. Great to talk to you as always. Thank you. I hey, appreciate you, Dan. God bless That's uh, Robert Griffin Jr. the third, part of the uh, Heisman Trust, the More Than a Trophy campaign. Also his podcast, RG3 and the Ones.